you've made it pretty far into these tutorials. There's only two more concepts to understand before we finalize our formula for setting up a game of solitaire. Power Apps consumes data at different levels and sizes. At the highest level is the table. We have cards, setup, and rules that we made on the first tutorial. And that collection that we created in Power Apps, Cards Played, that's actually also a table. But it's temporary. If you look inside the table, it's made up of components, columns, and rows. Columns are also referred to as fields, and rows are actually more commonly referred to as records. The most granular level of data that you'll find inside Power Apps takes place at the cross section of a column and a row. In Excel, we would call this a cell, but in Power Apps, I just refer to it as a value. It could be a numerical value, a text value, or it could be a Boolean value, true or false. What does this look like in practice? Well, the table could be the entire table or a filter on a table. Our table contains the columns ID, number, suit, and color. We actually used the column level when we were filtering our table. Next is the row or the record level. Our formula for selecting a random card started at the record level because each card selected is a record, but then that record ended up in a collection, which is at the table level. On the right-hand side, I'm demonstrating what's actually happening in the app. It's selecting a card, and it's sticking it in another table, cards played. And at the smallest level of data are individual values. In the case of our table, we have numerical values like the number 9. We have text like the word black. We have emojis, which also count as text. The tutorial you're about to watch is going to be concerned with the table level. Here's our deck of cards. If you think about how you set up a game of solitaire, you select a card, you place it in a pile, you select another card, you place it in the next pile. Eventually, you end up with seven piles. Each pile contains a specific number of cards. Then you stop. All of the remaining cards are returned to a deck. The deck is going to be used for drawing. At the moment, there's some information that's missing from our table. What column is this card in? What position is a given card? Is the card in the middle? Is the card on top? Is it the second card in the pile? Is it the last one? And is the card visible or is it not visible? Power Apps needs to know this information. I'm going to tell Power Apps this information by adding some helper columns. Power Apps has an add columns function. This allows me to take a table and give it a calculated column. For our purposes, I'm going to create a column called column. This is going to refer to which pile a card is in. I'll start by putting every card in the zero column. I'm going to click this button a few times. I'll check the collections. I notice every card is in the zero column, so that's correct. Let's refine this even further. This time, I want a random number. The rand function gives me a random decimal between 0 and 1. OK, that worked. But I actually want a number between 1 and 7 to designate which pile of cards it belongs to. So I, I could actually multiply rand by 7, and I'll end up with a number that's just below 7, just above 0. But that's not useful because I need a whole number. So I could round up this expression and I use the round up function. I continue to multiply a random number by seven, but the result is rounded up to the nearest whole number, comma, zero. That zero means I don't want any decimals. When I check the collections, I'll see I only have whole numbers now. The expression that we have is just a placeholder. We're actually going to be changing this when we write the final formula. There are two other bits of information I'd like to add. The add columns function allows me to add as many columns as I want. So I could use a comma. I'll call this next column visible. I'll shorten it to VIS as in vis. I'm going to set it to false. Now this column is going to be used later to determine is a card face up 
is a card face down. If I look into the collections list, all of the cards that I just collected are all false, meaning they're face down. I have one last column to add, but this formula is getting complicated. So I'm going to space things out by pressing Shift Return. I'll go ahead and place each added column into its own line. A pattern begins to emerge now that we've spaced things out. Added columns has a column name and an expression, a column name and an expression. We could continue this pattern for the third column that we'd like to add. I'll go ahead and place a comma here, shift return. The last column, we'll call it the position. For our purposes, we'll just put a the number one. Each card will be the position one. Again, this is not our final formula. It's just a placeholder to understand how the add columns function works. The columns are randomized and the position is one for everything. So what we've done in this tutorial is we worked at the table level. We added some additional columns to this table. We continue to shuffle it. We continue to select one and place it in the collection cards played. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to find the next step in creating your own solitaire app.